Good evening and welcome. It is Friday, November 18, 2011. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Aaron Dykes. Alex will be back next week. He's out on location covering an important story related to the United Nations takeover of parks and wildlife areas. And we have a large update tonight covering a lot of that material and we'll cover more in the future as well. But first, let's get into the news. In Europe, all things dealing with the debt crisis are coming undone. Kurt Nemo reports that there are ECB riots beginning in Italy as globalist Super Mario forces austerity. Now, this is an out-and-out -out Bilderberg and trilateral member, and he's instituted a new, quote, uh, technocratic government to impose austerity measures. On his first day in office, the bankster prime minister of Italy, Mario Monti, told Italians they could expect to be rolled by ECB banksters, European Central Bank. As we noted last week, Mario is a super globalist, a trilateralist, Bilderberger, and former bankster for Intesa San Paolo. His job is to bring IMF-style austerity to the people of Italy that Berlusconi cleared the way for. Specifically, this will include new taxes and, quote, incentives for free traders looking to buy up Italy's public infrastructure for pennies on the dollar of the same transfer back to the private sector they always do, not just anyone in the private sector. And so blogger J. Brad Hicks has noted that the Deutsche Bank and German banks loaned huge sums of money to Greece and Italy, knowing for a fact that at least half of the loan money was being stolen by wealthy personal friends and business partners of government officials, not caring, of course, because they knew the European Central Bank would enforce quote, austerity, demanding that people who didn't benefit from the loans would be the ones to pay it back. And thus, uh, under the reign of Super Mario, Mario Monti, the Bilderberg insider, the IMF riot has morphed into the ECB riot, and people were in uh, Turin as well as Milan uh, protesting against rule by bankers and this technocratic government set up by unelected Mario Monti. Certainly, it is rule by bankers. Meanwhile, the debt crisis shows again that Angela Merkel is the boss, and this article from CNBC gets Gets it to how having spent billions of euros they didn't have, governments across Europe are now finding out the hard way that without money they have to accept things they would rather not be doing, namely taking orders from Angela Merkel in Berlin and Mario Draghi in Frankfurt. And it gets into how Ireland's Minister Kenny uh, will have to visit Berlin to get approval of his spending plans for 2012. And it gets into how Italy and Greece are now forcing through austerity measures. Uh, with the orders from the same entities and how Cameron in the UK has been told not to allow a referendum vote as they're trying to discourage referendums all across Europe in attempt to jam through this new bailout vehicle that will take away sovereignty uniformly across Europe, especially from the failed countries, uh, imposing new restrictions and attempting to set up a new political union throughout Europe. Furthermore, the Telegraph gets into Germany's secret plan to derail a British referendum on the EU, going into further detail on the restrictions for David Cameron in the UK. Germany has drawn up secret plans to prevent a British referendum on the overhaul of the European Union amid concerns it could derail the Eurozone rescue package leaked documents obtained by the Telegraph disclosed. The leaked memo written by the German Forest Foreign Office discloses radical plans for an intrusive new European body that will be able to take over the economies of beleaguered Eurozone nations. And it goes on to talk about the riots in Italy and how the six-page German foreign ministry paper sets out plans for the creation of a European monetary fund that will transfer sovereignty from member states. The fund will have the power to take ailing countries into receivership and run their economies. So not only will these ministers tacitly and passively seek approval for their budgets, there will be a direct European monetary fund mechanism over them dictating all kinds of things, including these austerity measures, and they seek the development of a political union throughout the EU. And uh, furthermore, they have outlined ways to limit treaty changes and speed up reforms, i.e. preventing votes amongst the people in these countries, hoping instead to rubber stamp a bailout mechanism they hope will have unlimited money. They called it previously an unlimited monetary bazooka. We'll see what happens there. 
And indeed, meanwhile, Russian warships enter Syrian waters to prevent NATO attack. Paul Joseph Watson writes about how Moscow, in an aggressive move to stop another humanitarian intervention, has moved in its warships. Russian warships are due to arrive at Syrian territorial waters, indicating that the move represented a clear message to the West. Moscow would resist any foreign intervention in the country's civil unrest. And obviously things are heating up there. Syria and Iran, among others, on the globalist hit list to take out in the Middle East. They've already dealt with Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, Libya, and other countries in that Central Asian, Middle Eastern, and Northern African area. And we can just expect tensions to escalate. We hope it will not lead to any kind of World War III scenario, although the interests posed for Russia and China make that increasingly likely. Now, another story we have for you tonight was based on a tip we got on the radio today. Alex and myself heard from a caller talking about an article in Game Informer, the world's number one video game magazine, and it promised to, to explore the volatile political climate with a groundbreaking and controversial look at homegrown terror. And it gets into an article about the new Rainbow Six Patriots game, uh, which is one of several games based on the Tom Clancy novels. And this article is called The Enemy Within. It says, you fought Nazi, Russian, North Korean, and Middle Eastern threats. Now in Rainbow Six Patriots, you're asked, can you turn the weapon on your fellow countrymen? Can you turn the weapon on your fellow countrymen? I want to read part of this blurb here because it's very informative. Americans are angry, and why shouldn't they be? Uh, goes through everything, dealing with debt, foreclosures, bailouts, the degrading infrastructure, the job market, and a whole lot more. It says, in response to the gradual erosion of our beloved nation, resentful citizens of all kinds and backgrounds are rising up in the form of new political movements like the Tea Party and Occupy Wall Street. But unlike the 60s, uh, they have proven largely ineffective at slowing or reversing the downward trajectory, and the media is not helping matters going on to blame uh, Internet and talk radio, among other things. Case in point, okay, it says history proves that if leaders don't move swiftly to address the grievances, the political rage can sometimes find a more violent channel of expression. Case in point, the meteoric rise of militias in the past few years, and who does it quote, but the Southern Poverty Law Center and extremely politically biased groups that have long sought to target quote, white ring, white ring groups, as well as uh, patriot and militia groups, including this organization and many other groups from We Are Change on down, all peaceful groups trying to defend this country and uphold the Constitution. It says in 2009, the Southern Poverty Law Center reported a massive resurgence in anti-government paramilitary groups, which jumped from 43 militias in 07 to nearly 300 in 210. And this was noticed by Homeland Security, NSA, CIA, FBI, and others as a real threat to the stability of the nation. Then it goes on to how America's volatile political climate serves as the jumping off point for Rainbow Six Patriots, where the tactical shooter series eschews the exhausted Russian, Chinese, and Middle Eastern crises that were so common, now to replace them with the roles of elite tactical units with homegrown terrorists. And the civilians caught in the crossfire, do you have what it takes to pull the trigger on a fellow citizen? And so they've set the scenario for Homeland Security talking points where they're targeting returning veterans, which are mentioned in this lengthy six-page article, militia groups, radical political groups throughout the country, and more. In the game, they have a scenario where the true patriots uh, is a combine made up of various militia groups throughout the country, headed by a charismatic figure named Treadway, who hopes to restore civil liberties and the Constitution. And it says he could strike anywhere. He'd like to overthrow the government, but he's really smart, and he knows that a movement today won't uh, conclusively have lasting change tomorrow, uh, thus other types of movements there, which the game gets into. And uh, there's an added bonus. It says in previous games, allowing a civilian to die was game over. That means you lose the game, you have to start over. Now you're not exempt from tough situational decisions. 
Do you kill one civilian now and potentially spare hundreds of lives, or is the lone human life too critical to lose, even if it means thousands of others may meet an untimely death down the road? In Patriots, you make the call whether or not to kill American civilian citizens. And this is just disgusting. It matches perfectly the MIAC report that leaked in 2009, uh, the very similar Homeland Security report, identifying third-party political groups, constitutionalists, and a whole lot more as part of the growing domestic terrorism uh, situation that TSA and the rest of them are supposed to be on the lookout for, thus justifying checkpoints and everything else on the highways, at train stations, bus stations, now in shopping malls. Uh, they have people watching at hotels now, they say, and a whole lot more. And this is just disgusting indoctrination. There's a lot of youth who play these games who will later be joining the military and essentially brainwash through, uh, I think the average video game takes at least 40 hours of playing to complete. So it's a lot more time you spend in these games than with a movie or a TV program. And, and through the first person shooter, you're repeating these actions over and over. So you really kind of get indoctrinated with it. Uh, just a dangerous precedent, and you can see where government propaganda is in these big, expensive games, which rake in uh, more money now than a lot of movies and TV programs as well. So an interesting tip we got, and it is certainly true. You can check that out again in Game Informer, and we're going to keep an eye on what possible effect that Rainbow Six Patriots could have. Now we're going to be back from break in just a minute with exclusive coverage of the United Nations takeover. Uh, but first, let's play some video from uh, Rainbow Six Patriots. Very nice place you've got here. You really did cash in on everyone else getting foreclosed, didn't you? Today you're going to make up for that. <laughs> Listen, you hold this down until Times Square or your family gets a one Take it, fire! If they kill him, everybody on this bridge is going to be blown sky high. Engage NYPD immediately. Are you ordering friendly fire? No time to radio now. Take the shot. Shoot your wound. They're down. Proxy bombers on. Remote detonator. This is bad. There's more than 100 people still in the kill radius. We're out of time. I'm sorry. Over here, now! What did you do? What I had to do. And really, in other ways, this game just goes along with the same indoctrination of series like 24 with Jack Bauer, where it's okay to torture people. You decide if it's worth it to kill civilians to stop a terrorist attack, especially when it's American citizens as part of a homegrown effort. Now, we're going to be back from break in just a minute with exclusive coverage and some of Alex's clips from America Destroyed by Design and other updates on the United Nations takeover of much of our parks and wildlife land and a whole lot more, as well as more news. But I first want to remind you about the Christmas specials. There's a Patriot offer for a $39.95 super discounted 44% off yearly subscription to PrisonPlanet.tv that now includes the nightly news, Alex's daily radio TV show, which is three hours long every day, all the special video reports we do, uh, the online books, the other videos we offer, and a whole lot more. You can also get that yearly special with 18 physical copies of Alex's film on DVD for $129.95, an incredible deal. And there's nothing like Christmas time when you're giving gifts during the holiday to have a physical, nicely packaged, uh, plastic wrap, something to give to that friend, family, or loved one uh, to let them know, oh, what is this? What is this you want me to check out? And a lot of times they will, along with the other junk you get around the holiday times. Uh, so something to keep in mind. We'll be back in just a moment for break. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sign Us Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com.
And we are back from break. I'm Aaron Dykes here again on this Friday edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. As you know, we've been trying to bring you more and more special coverage of stuff the mainstream media won't touch and, and stuff that even a lot of our longtime listeners are aware of but may have fallen off the path as far as specific details and putting the bigger picture together. With that in mind, we want to review some of Alex's first film, America Destroyed by Design from 1997, where he covers the United Nations takeover of U.S. national parks and wildlife land, as well as parks throughout the entire world. It's all part of the larger Agenda 21 United Nations biosphere takeover, where they're going to move populations away from those areas into concentration traded cities and really restrict that usage for uh, kind of the international scientific community's discretion. There are executive orders we're going to cover uh, involving that. There are specific national uh, monuments and world heritage sites designated by UNESCO we're going to cover, and a whole lot more. The list is exhaustive. We're going to touch upon a lot of that tonight, but first, let's check out a clip from Alex's 1997 film. Our story starts in southern Arizona, where the UN is taking over. Just look at the size of this beautiful organ pipe cactus. And the biggest concentration of these in the world is now part of this 500,000 acre UN UNESCO environmentalist biosphere. It has nothing to do with the environment. It has to do with control of resources. Gorgeous. Just look at it. Look at the size of that thing. It's got to be, what, 40 feet tall? You're looking at the certificate of ownership of our national parks. So they started the precedent way back in 1968. And by 1976, the Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument was beginning to come under international control under the guise of environmentalism. But in 1996, you'll find teeth were added. Now we're fixing to go inside the main visitor center and talk to the head ranger and find out if he's aware of this massive loss of U.S. sovereignty. Have you seen this photograph right here? And I called Bruce Babbitt's office and talked to some of their people and they told me that that was true at Mammoth Cave, United Nations, a World Heritage Site, an International Biosphere Reserve, and they said well, yes and we took it down because people didn't like it. See, y'all don't have that and y'all never did. And that's the funny part. They only did it in certain parts of the country, and now they've taken the signs down. But you do have this plaque, don't you? You, uh, you said you have a brass plaque? Right. Uh -huh. Just like that one? Right. Uh -huh. um, well, parks have to respond to the local community, and I suppose people in the local community objected to those signs. And um, they complied with them by taking down the sign. But they did not take down the, inter the international it's order. It's not a requirement that they have the sign in the first place. I got you. So in order to be accommodating, they went along with the local community. You know, we don't have a sign, so it must not be required. Got you. Well, thanks a lot, sir. Appreciate that. Ranger David DeWitt. David DeWitt. Thank you, sir. Okay. Here we are at the Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument at the park ranger's office. And he told us that he didn't see a problem with the international designation. But he did have to admit, why are they taking down the UN signs but leaving the executive order there? See, they're taking away the contracts from in front of your face so you don't see what's happening. But then they're just continuing with their plans right here. United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization program on man and biosphere. Now, these clips are, uh, there's a lot of clips. Alex confronts a lot of parks. We're going to play them again in a minute where they begin to harass Alex. Now, what you're looking at is a international United Nations base takeover of these lands through many layers. There are a lot of different agreements that factor into this. It's not just the man and biosphere program, although notice the rather occultic Egyptian onk that's been uh, integrated into that logo. I don't know if you could see that now on the overhead screen here, man and biosphere program. Uh, but Alex does confront those signs at these UNESCO-held World Heritage Park sites and other uh, important places. There's about 20 of those, and then there's another 47 biosphere-restricted sites. But there are, are other sites, too, as we're going to get into. But first, let's play another clip from America Destroyed by Design. I'm at Mammoth Cave, too, and there's one, too. 
Yes, they had UN signs there, didn't they? Right, yeah. They're, well, they just put those in, though. They just put the United Nations... Well, they had one in before, but they're moving them. I don't know. How recently have you been there? Because they were redoing the entranceway, and they're going to put them in a different yeah. spot. So. We were there about three months ago. Okay. So they probably are pretty much moved, I would think. Because I left, like, four months ago. <laughs> I have just a question for you, uh -huh. and I know this isn't this isn't a policy question. It's just a question of other things. Why do we need the United Nations to put up its signs and to help us oversee our own national parks? We're not necessarily overseeing our own national parks. Part of what the Biosphere Reserve does, especially in Kentucky, is that it's not for the park; it's for the area outside. Yes. The now stop yes. the tape right there. I stopped the tape right there because she said something very important. The United Nations designation over that park is not so much necessarily the park itself as for the land around it. That's because they have the core protected areas, but they also have other areas where they have restricted uh, usage for humans and a further zone that they can restrict if they choose, if they deem that protected area to be in danger for a wide variety of reasons. There's a lot of tyranny that can open up through these layers of designation zones. That's something Michael Coffin's covered too. We're gonna get more into that. Play the clip again. Parks. Part of what the Biosphere Reserve does, especially in Kentucky, is that it's not for the park, it's for the area outside yes. the park. Yes, but so they are you familiar with the executive orders setting up a precedent for world governorship of, of world parks? And, and I've heard bits and tads, but I haven't read enough about it to say in particular. But you have seen the UN signs? Yeah. But they're not here. See, that's, what, that's funny, though. This park is under that, but they don't put the signs out. I think if it's such a thing of pride that we're getting into the international community, we ought to put the signs out. Right. Well, they, it, those symbols don't have anything to do with how the park runs. That's just a destination that was yeah. just an honorary title, basically. Oh, just it's honorary to go to UN and say, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's not anything. It helps us maybe get some grants with research and things like that, but that's all it does. It doesn't help control the park in any way. You mean international money coming in doesn't affect the way the parks would be run? It's for research and things like that. How does that affect the park? Well, how it affects it is, is researchers give recommendations to the parks and to the states, uh, locales, and the federal government. Right. And, and by doing that, they are paying the researchers. That's the, that's the key. That's the keystone. That's the Trojan horse. Then they will give the information that the people you probably heard the term, if you want a survey, you can pay for whatever you want. You tell them what you want to survey. Yeah, I've heard that before. Because I really support the parks. I just feel like that I see too much big, I mean, I don't even mean corporations. I mean super old money banks in Europe and other places are really out for big land grabs. Yeah. And they're instituting the policies. We're hearing at the universities, uh, the call, it's almost uh, fascistic measures. Sometimes. Is there anybody that I can, who will just tell me the same thing you did, but just where I can have a mic on and things? Well, we have a public affairs officer right here. Well, you heard me just ask him to just politely talk to a public affairs officer. We were sitting down for about 10 minutes with our cameras off and barely got a shot of her. That's why we had to freeze it. We only got about a half a second of her. She was very rude and drug me to the back and threatened to arrest me for dare to ask questions. Was I some type of terrorist? And you should have seen the monster they had in the back with us. This is all part of America. Yes, if you ask questions, you must be some type of weirdo. Now, there you have a World Heritage Site sign, one of the two UN designations that the Grand Canyon has. And under these, I've already told you many times, the Executive Order 12,986, which turns over control to the international community as collateral on the national debt. I want to make a point. All the rangers and people we talked to up to the point at the office were very kind and polite and helpful. It was only the big wigs, and they openly told us behind closed doors that they had heard about types like us that were asking questions about the UN. We have to be watched. And there you have it. Alex got himself in trouble with those little petty bureaucrats over asking questions about the United Nations. Uh, but what are we talking about here with these biosphere programs and the rest of it? Uh, we have a few articles to help point to that. The first, I believe, is Man and the Biosphere Program off of UNESCO's website, uh, defining the program that started in 1971, 40 years out now. And uh, it's an intergovernmental scientific program aiming to set a scientific basis for the improvement of the relationships between people and the environment globally. Sounds nice and friendly and like they want to protect wildlife 
Uh, by the way, the UNESCO founder, Julian Huxley, worked with Prince Philip and Prince Bernhard, uh, the Bilderberg founder, and also a member of the Nazi party to, find, to fund the World Wildlife Fund, which also works in concert with these groups. Now, who owns our biospheres and world heritage sites? This is an article from Michael S. Kaufman, Ph.D., He's pretty much the leading figure when it comes to the takeover of American lands based on biological diversity. He first found out when he attended the Convention on Biological Diversity and uh, really began to uncover the banker's plan behind this takeover. You saw him in an endgame, and uh, I refer you to that for even more information on the Agenda 21 takeover and the attempt to confine human activity. But uh, among other things, he says one only has to look at the Champlain Adirondack Biosphere Reserve in Vermont and New York to see how this would work. A parallel concept has actually been implemented since 1972 with the Adirondack State Park by New York State. Instead of the robust, thriving communities promised in U.S. MAB literature that's man in the biosphere program, the Adirondack economy has been devastated culture and much of the infrastructure frozen in time and the people repressed by a communal feudal land tenure structure where non-elected, non-represented, NGO-controlled Adirondack Park Agency develops and enforces arbitrary and capricious regulations across multiple countries. And he gets into that after explaining how, yes, the United States did constitutionally agree to the World Heritage Treaty in 1972, as misguided as it may have been, as the Senate has uh, powers over international treaties, but Congress never passed any law related to UNESCO's International Biosphere Program, uh, which began its first convention back in 1968, if I'm not mistaken. So basically, uh, through executive orders and complicity in our own government, we have signed on to this international management, and yet it still affects us all. Uh, now, in this article, United Nations Biosphere Reserve Land Grabs, published by Spy Witness News back in September 2009, uh, it just highlights a little of the things that you may find off-putting about United Nations control. For instance, what did the Statue of Liberty, Independence Hall, and Monticello have in common? What about the Great Smoky Mountains, Yellowstone Park, and the Grand Canyon? Would it surprise you to learn that every one of these unique American landmarks is also controlled by the United Nations. And it gets into more detail about the 72 World Heritage Treaty and the 68 UNESCO Biosphere Conference. It's amazing but true, every one of the natural and historic treasures listed above, plus more than a dozen more in America, has been designated an official World Heritage Site by the United Nations Education, Scientific and Culture Organization, UNESCO, headquartered in Paris, France. And there's a map just of those 20 some odd uh, um, World Heritage Sites, there's another 47 MAB Biosphere Reserve directory. But that is not all. There is also the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources Organization, who put together the United Nations list of protected areas. This one is printed from this one is printed from 1997. Uh, they've been compiling this list since the early 60s and working on the biosphere designation since 1959 through various United Nations uh, holding subcommittees. Now, this 1997 report lists about 12,000 protected sites uh, throughout the world, including many in the United States. That's what's printed in this manual. And just for instance, I'll turn to Texas since I am familiar with many of those locations. And they get into all the different protected areas, and it is not just national parks. It also includes national forest, it includes national grasslands, national natural landmarks, national parks, of course, in this case, Big Bend and Guadalupe Mountains National Parks. It includes national preserves. It includes national recreation areas. It includes national scenic rivers. It includes national seashores, such as the Padre Island National Seashore, really a very large area. It also includes the national wildlife refuges in Texas and all the other states listed here. It includes state natural area reserves and at least a dozen state parks, including uh, near to Austin, the Bastrop State Park, 
heard in Alice Falls State Park and the others on this list. It also includes wilderness forest service areas and, uh, and more. And so that's 12,000 sites. That site list was updated in 2003 where it jumped from 12,754 sites on the 1997 list uh, I don't know if you can see this right here, to 2003 when more than 68,000 protected areas were listed with the IUC in United Nations protected areas list. Such a large list that they couldn't even publish the actual locations. They're on a CD-ROM. Now, it's important to point out that this United Nations list of protected areas expanded from 12,000 sites to more than 68,000. They have different categories for the reasons they're managing the areas. Uh, it includes uh, managed and maintained mainly for science, category 1A, uh, maintained mainly for wilderness protection, category 1B, uh, maintained for ecosystem and recreation, i.e. national parks, category 2, uh, maintained because it's a national monument, Category 3, uh, to Category 4, where there's habitat and species management areas uh, protected for conservation. And that becomes important because of stuff like this, Executive Order 13112, which uh, defines protection for invasive species. However, many scholars have realized that the vague definition of invasive species can and has been used to curb human and domestic animal activity, i.e. reigning in human population as well as its industry and agriculture because it could include everything from domesticated livestock to pets, houseplants, front lawns, neighborhood golf courses, food crops, and even that adaptive resilient species known as Homo sapiens. And so the Invasive Species Council uh, is the type of entity that could use Category 4 Habitat Species Management Area as they want to, as I pointed out before, under Agenda 21, concentrate the human populations. Again, that's something that Michael Kaufman, the expert, gets into. You also have Category 5 Protected Landscapes and Seascapes, uh, mainly for conservation and recreation. Then they point out uh, since 1997, they added Category 6, Managed Resource Protected Area, protected area managed mainly for the sustainable use of natural ecosystems. So there you have areas set aside just for so-called sustainability, a very important buzzword to all these United Nations treaties from the 1992 Rio uh, meeting and treaty to the Convention on Biological Diversity that Michael Kaufman covers to the uh, Agenda 21 stuff, and this other article out of Spy Witness talks about how the glo Global Biodiversity Assessment is 1,140 pages, Agenda 21 is 300 pages, Our Global Neighborhood is 410 pages, and that's just a few of the agreements that outline this emerging international law based around sustainability and wildlife management that will have grave consequences on the development of human society. That is, in essence, why this is so important. That's why Alex covers it in his America Destroyed by Design film, as well as the seminal Endgame film. Now, some of the other executive orders that have been passed to help with this include the 1997 Executive Order 13061, which officially established the American Heritage Rivers Initiative that allows the federal government to take control of large parcels of land adjacent to U.S. rivers. And I, it was just recently we interviewed people on how they're forcing flood insurance and allowing uh, things like hydroelectric dams to take over all kinds of privately owned land near U.S. rivers. And again, they have the primary core zones where, uh, for instance, a national park would be completely restricted uh, for whatever reason, whatever category they put it into. But then there is a buffer zone and an extended zone outside of that buffer zone that you heard the woman in the America Destroyed by Design clip refer to that allows these United Nations related environmental groups to clamp down and restrict human activity in the buffer zone and the extended zone. For instance, Kaufman breaks down how Yellowstone Park uh, 
and the so-called danger to that park allowed them to close a coal mine that operated 150 years before the establishment of that park and also allowed them to consider the park in danger because it has too many visitors, too many tourists. That's the kind of stuff you're going to see. And by the way, it was these same robber baron groups from the Rockefellers to the Harrimans that worked with people like the Sierra Club founder, John Muir, to set up these national parks in the first place. It was always about a land grab and what was then federal power, now world government powers. And there's a lot more to cover there, but we're going to draw the line, I think, except for this uh, executive order, which is 12986, the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural and Natural Resources, where it outlines immunity for all these uh, international groups as they work on these biosphere areas. It, it uh, makes them immune from property seizure, and it makes them immune from search and confiscation, and from interference of all kind, basically giving them total jurisdiction over these areas that have been declared biospheres. You don't believe me? I gave you the documents. You look it up, and there's a whole lot more, too. We should get Michael Coffin back on soon. Uh, hopefully, that's something Alex will see, too. Now, we have other news, too, but just as a segue, I want to remind you of the article that came out in June of 2001, I'm sorry, 2011 in the Wall Street Journal, and that is, want to buy a piece of Greek island. Now, on the one hand, you have the European debt crisis and the austerity moves where they're trying to sell off infrastructure, and thus this, where they want to auction off $42 billion in public property, uh, namely uh, choice Greek islands, and sell them to private investors. You saw how in Italy they're being accused of selling publicly owned infrastructure for pennies on the dollar uh, to some of these bigwigs, and the same thing is going on in Greece, where they're auctioning off either outright ownership of very nice Greek islands there on the Mediterranean, or extended and cheap leases on them uh, where various types of choice corporations will be able to set up tourist traps and a whole lot more. Now, uh, we have a brand new Alex vid where he breaks down not only the UN takeover of these lands, but the increasing amount of bureaucratic ninnying and interference and uh, kind of TSA style checkpoint questioning that's now going on in many of these parks. I've always witnessed it myself here in Texas at state parks. Uh, let's check out that video now. All right, my friends, we're here at the entrance of Carlsbad Caverns in southern New Mexico, and I am traveling through the southwest here in the next week. I'll also still be doing my radio show live via Skype every day from 11 to 2, but I'm traveling through the Southwest, uh, basically on the same path I took in 1997 when I shot America Destroyed by Design. I want to see how America has changed. And we've hit our first destination, scheduled destination. Last night we saw the nuclear waste being hauled. And that's still a mystery what type of waste it was. It said U.S. government plates, and that video is posted here on our YouTube channel and at Infowars.com. Now we've gotten to Carlsbad Caverns. We're going to go to other destinations, but we don't want the establishment to know where we're going to be next. We want to get their real response. I get here. I'm polite with my family. Uh, the park rangers is about three or four times as many as there was when I was just here five years ago with my children, I guess six years ago. Then I was here about a decade before that as a, as a college, and then I was here as a child twice. Totally different now from even just five, six years ago. Um, they interrogated me uh, when I was buying the tickets about who I was, where I was coming from, what I was doing, uh, where I'd been. All, of course, because of white nose syndrome or whatever in the East, even though these uh, Mexican bats here are immune to it. It's been shown. Side issue. And they did it like it was a conversation. Then it was other questions. Then we went through two other segments of being questioned before we got here. And then we were told all these rules and regulations, you know, that we're basically lucky to be here. And it's just this whole attitude by government. So now Carlsbad Caverns is beginning to have a TSA type things creep in. I told you five years ago the NFL would start groping your genitals just like TSA. Uh, and now they're talking about putting microwave scanners in at them, and they're groping you from ankle to neck. They're doing it in high school areas. Uh, they're doing it all over the country. We're converting to a police state. And, and every culture and government and corporations, when you go to get a rent car, they interrogate you. Where are you going? What are you doing? Who are you visiting? They're putting it in a database. It's all part of Patriot Act. And it just shows how this country is completely converted uh, into a third world style police state if we allow this to continue. And so that's basically the report we're giving you. I mean, look at this. I came here when I was in college with friends. We, we, we spent the whole day, and then we came 
lights on bats fly out here at the amphitheater. I'll give you a shot of that in a moment. But now look. Now they want you to know, do not, you know, before it was don't have flash. Now it's don't videotape uh, the bats when they fly out, which are just all over the place, under bridges and houses and caves everywhere, just tens of millions of them every few hundred square miles. Uh, they're all over the Southwest, but oh no, don't, don't photograph them. It's all about bossing you around. It's all about getting in your space. It's all about treating you like you're some type of criminal. And I, for one, and just completely and totally sick of all of it. So we're going to follow some reports from down here for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. And we will continue to travel to the Southwest and show you the other UN biospheres and heritage sites that the uh, globalists are taking over. Alex Jones reporting for InfoWars.com. All right, my friends. And as you can here. see, it's not only a takeover of the physical lands, but an increasing bureaucratic pestering. As I mentioned, I was at a Texas state park where, among other things, they asked for my zip code and asked if I was hiding people in the car. I mean, is that what happens when you just try to have a good time at the park? Now, we're going to cover other news here, and then we have another exclusive Alex Jones video coming up, so stay tuned. Steve Watson reports for PrisonPlanet.com today that the Supreme Court in Minnesota is blocking the government's plan to claim outright ownership over DNA. And collecting and storing every newborn's blood violates the Genetic Privacy Act. And he writes how the case has exposed the fact that there is an ongoing semi-covert movement by state and federal governments to claim ownership over every newborn baby's DNA for the purpose of genetic research without the consent of individual citizens. And of course, this is a global DNA database. They're trying to map the human genome. It has eugenics tie-ins, and it has tie-ins with the development of uh, bioweapons and the rest of it, including race-specific bioweapons. But uh, specifically, the Minnesota uh, Supreme Court has ruled that any parent of a newborn would have to be specifically informed and opt into the process rather than opting out as they had previously done. And since 2008, the State Department officials have begun seeking exemption for the so-called DNA warehouse from Minnesota's privacy law, the Genetic Privacy Act, something we need to cover more in depth later. We've previously spoken to one of the main people involved with this, Twyla Brace. Perhaps we should get her back on. Sprint has launched a, uh, its participation in the soon-to-be-mandatory emergency alert messages. Earlier in October, you saw the takeover nationally of television and radio communications with the first-ever nationally coordinated emergency alert messages. Now they wish to branch out to mobile phones and the Internet, and telecommunications giant Sprint has announced the launch of its wireless emergency alerts program that will deliver messages from the federal government directly to millions of Americans as part of a system set to become mandatory on all new cell phones. You have to opt in on the currently existing cell phones, but the new ones will have a special chip that coordinates with these government uh, alert messages and probably, I would imagine, may have surveillance technology involved as well. And all the majors are lined up to participate in this, so good luck getting out of that one unless we say no nationally. Uh, on the unconstitutional front, as well as the puppet president front, Obama uses the auto pen again to sign a bill into law. He's overseas, uh, I think, dealing with some of the Asian foreign policy this week, but he needed to suddenly sign a bill uh, allowing the government to continue on a budgetary matter. So they decided to use this mechanical device that copies his signature rather than having the president physically sign the bill. Article 1, Section 7 of the Constitution says if the president approves a bill, quote, he shall sign it. No provision is made for having a substitute signature affixed by a mechanical device or designated aid. Now, you've seen the kings and emperors of the past with their little uh, seal that they use to sign bills, but here in America, it's been a physical signature. So is it unconstitutional for Barack Obama to use the auto pen? Uh, they get into how, under President George W. Bush, the lawyers argued for the right to use the auto pen, but Bush himself never used it. Obama, however previously used this uh, sort of like tacitly agreed upon power to sign extensions of the Patriot Act. Robo-signing the Patriot Act doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Sounds doubly unconstitutional, something we should certainly 
keep a watch on. Now, uh, as you know, Alex is on a working vacation, partly to check out many of the United Nations held national parks across the country, and he's been giving continuous updates through his iPhone on the Alex Jones channel and posted at Infowars.com. You just saw one of his ex exclusive videos a few minutes ago. Now we have another one on the dumping of nuclear waste. Uh, let's go to that now. Thanks. There's a government truck that says radioactive U.S. government plates, and then it's got these, these, these ICBM pieces or nuclear reactors. Oh my God! Type BU. What in the world is this? I want to know what these are, man. I, people won't be able to tell me. I'm gonna put this up on the web. We're out here in the. I mean, look at this. It's got the radioactive sign. Oh, we're fine. I think it's got the radioactive signs. Maybe they got like zombies in those tanks. Like in some kind of zombie movie. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube. We're out here investigating the UN biospheres. Hey, but according to everybody, radiation is good for you. The EPA's raised the level they say is safe. I mean, how weird is that? A truck that says radioactive has a radioactive flag on the back, a warning, and has a US government plate. What do you think those are, Richard? Uh, that's a good question. It could be uh, some nuclear waste materials. I think they haul nuclear waste around here to try to put it away. So it could be that, or like you said, it could be uh, maybe the radon gas from some of the drilling. Yeah, but I said that before I was taping, before we'd read U.S. government play. They wouldn't be involved hauling the radon gas, though. So I know that, uh, I guess, in some areas, they do still have nuclear weapons manufacturing and uh, yeah. nuclear material I'm, for... I'm sure whatever it is, it's nutrition. This is our first video uploaded on the road. Stay tuned. And there you have it. Of course, more updates from Alex throughout the weekend if you're watching this live on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube and also posted to Infowars.com. Uh, but there you have it. The United Nations is going to clamp down on human activity to protect biospheres, supposedly. But then uh, nuclear waste is dumped wherever they want. GE builds nuclear power plants on fault lines on the islands of Japan. And now we have the Fukushima disaster and a whole lot more to deal with. Well, that's all we're going to get into tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. But just remember, throughout the month of October, you can enjoy a 15-day free trial of PrisonPlanet.tv. That's if you're not already familiar with how great those services are. You can watch this program as well as Alex's radio TV show during the day, three hours long and more every day for free for 15 days, or if you already know how great it is, you can begin to take advantage of the PrisonPlanet.tv Christmas special where you can get a yearly membership for an extremely discounted price, 44% off, only $39.95, and you get the nightly news, the radio show, all the special reports, and a whole lot more. Or if you want to get the InfoWar package, you can get that membership for a year plus 18 physical DVDs packaged and wrapped ready to go as very nice gifts to help turn on your friends, family, and neighbors to these important issues as it becomes more critical than ever. Until then, stay tuned and help spread the word about this broadcast. Warn people while you still can that this country is absolutely being taken over. They're putting in a police state, and they're even taking over our national parks, as we've covered, if this is the first time you're hearing that information. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more next week. Good night.